is Aditya Shakti Kumar and I am 11 years old. I was born in Fremont, California and currently live in San Ramon, California. My mom grew up in Chennai for the first 18 years of her life and my dad got his first job engagement here. So I am super excited to be here in Chennai where it all began. Today I will be talking to you about how I am seizing all the opportunities that life has thrown at me. I will talk to you about how I am exploring different languages, Tamil and English, different types of music, Carnatic, Western classical and jazz. Finally, I will be talking to you about my passion for robotics. <coughs> Throughout my talk, I will be sharing stories of how I am growing up to be an Indian American and how I am immersing myself in two different and fascinating cultures the traditional and rich Indian culture and the free-spirited and entrepreneurial American culture. For each story that I share, I will be asking you a question and sharing my thoughts and observations. So let us start off with my first story. The theme of story number one is success happens when preparation meets opportunity. My family started teaching me written and oral Tamil when I was still very young. I started my formal ed education in Tamil via the California Tamil Academy in 2005. I was three years old at that time. Now let me tell you something. English has 26 alphabets. Tamil, on the other hand, has 247 different alphabets. That is 10 times more. Although learning Tamil was very hard at the beginning, I decided to persist. I know what you're thinking. Why? He is born in America. Why should he learn Tamil? Well, here's the simple reason. Tamil school had me hooked, dude. They gave me medals, trophies, and certificates. Homeworks, projects, tests, exams. It has been nine years of Tamil school, and I continue to go for the medals, trophies, and certificates. I'm just kidding. I do it because it lets me learn one of the most ancient languages in the world. It helps me understand my roots. When I was still very young, I started dancing for Tamil songs. See, I told you, it is trophy time. I am acting in Tamil, debating in Tamil, and overall immersing myself in Tamil. In 2008, my mother got a call from the director of Kriya, Deepa Ramadra. Kriya is one of the top most Tamil drama troops in North America. Director Deepa wanted me to audition for a child role in a drama called Anime. I auditioned and got in. Acting in Tamil for Kriya has been one of the best experiences of my life. We got to stage the drama in eight different stages. Director Deepa also arranged for local press interviews and we got to meet some of the most legendary drama directors and actors, including director Bharatogasa. It felt awesome. I also got an opportunity to act in a uh, short Tamil drama called Modern Tiruvalayadal in the presence of the entire Crazy Mohan drama group. That felt awesome too. Now here's my first observation. If I hadn't studied Tamil so rigorously for so many years, many of the fun and learning opportunities I have had would have not come my way. Now let us ponder over some questions. What is an opportunity? How will an opportunity come knocking? And how will it lead you to success? Opportunities only come if you and I are prepared. Spend time thinking about the kinds of opportunities you want to prepare yourself for. See opportunities as they come to you and seize those opportunities. Now here's my first question to you. Are you doing at least one activity that will prepare you for an upcoming opportunity? What is it? It is great if you have one. If not, find one and pursue it. Takeaway number one. Success happens when preparation meets opportunity. Come on, repeat with me. Success happens when preparation meets opportunity. Now let us move on to my second story. The theme of story number two is develop and engage both sides of your brain. This story is about my musical journey and the learnings that I have had along the way. When I was 
fifth and second grade, I started learning the piano. To play the piano, I had to use both my right and my left hand. Believe me, it was not easy at all, but I decided to persist. In my third grade, I started playing the recorder. The recorder is sort of like a simple flute. In my fourth grade, I played the cello as part of the strings program and tried out the flute as part of the band program. To play the flute, I had to learn how to press and release the keys using both my right and my left hand. I also had to learn how to blow into the mouthpiece. I also got a chance to play the bass drum and the drum set. In my sixth grade, I played the trumpet and French horn. On every single journey that we undertake, there are uphill roads, downhill roads, and curvy roads. In my fifth grade, I started hitting an uphill road. My music teacher said that if I audition and do well, I could participate in a special band that was called Honors Band. Now picture this. Band, Honors Band. Honors Band sounded more special. So I decided to work hard and learn several new pieces. I thought I'd walk in, play my audition pieces, and walk out victoriously the first time itself. Now here's what really happened. I walked in, I played my audition pieces, and my music teacher said, Aditya, your breath is making the flute squeak. Go back and fix it. Squeak? Really? A mouse might squeak. Door squeak. Floor squeak. How can my flute squeak? Shoot. Felt so disappointed. I went back home and I told my family, I don't want to be an honest fan. The next day, I woke up and said, there is no way I am not going to be an honest fan. My dad said, it is all in your mind. When you can practice hard, you can achieve it. He said, okay, Cooper, what are you waiting for? Start practicing. I practiced hard and marched into my music teacher's room again the next Friday. She said, Aditya, the high notes are not quite right. Go back and fix them. I went back home and practiced so hard that I started having headaches. When you blow into the flute for a long time without managing your breath, the headaches hit hard. I went back to my music teacher's room every single Friday for a month and a half. Finally, on my sixth try, she said, Aditya, I am very impressed with your persistence. The high notes are right, the squeak is gone, and you made it into the honest man. Believe me, there's nothing like being seated in the first row with your two good looking girls. <laughs> Remember, an opportunity plus persistence equals success. Persistence rocks. Sometime during my fifth grade, I went to a Carnatic music event and was attracted by the sound the Mirabanga made. I asked my parents to find a Mirabanga teacher, and they did. Although playing Mirabangam was very hard in the beginning, I decided to persist. I transitioning quickly between Carnatic music and Western classical was very hard. I had to play different beats with my left hand and right hand. For example, my left hand had to play Ta and Do, and my right hand had to play Ti and Na. So to play Ta, Ti, Do, Na, I had to transition quickly between my right and my left hand. I'm continuing to have fun with music and make progress in it while comparing and contrasting Carnatic music with Western classical and jazz. Here are some pictures of my musical mentors. I thank them from the bottom of my heart. Let us move on to my second observation. Did you know that the left side of your brain controls the right side of your body and vice versa? The left brain is your logical side and the right side of your brain is your creative side. Playing musical instruments like piano and mirudangam help you train both the left and the right side of your brain. Daniel Pink said that right brainers will rule the future. It's not enough just to train the logical side of your brain. We also have to train the creative side of our brain. That's the only way we can utilize our full potential. Now here's my second question to you. Are you doing at least one activity that helps develop both sides of your brain? What is it? It's great if you have one. If not, find one and pursue it. Takeaway number two. Develop and engage both sides of your brain. Repeat with me. Develop and engage both sides of your brain. Now let us 
move on to my third story. The theme of story number three is, achieving greatness requires passion, time, and effort. I first started building robots with a kid called NXT Mindstorms. I absolutely loved it. I had joined with my friends to form a team to participate in a competition called FLL. FLL stands for First Lego League. It's one of the top most robotic competitions. I participated in FLL in 2011, 2012, and 2013. I also took many robotic classes to learn more about robotics. My mom is a huge fan of Superstar Rajnikan. So during my summer break in 2011, I watched a movie called Ender and the Robot. I absolutely loved the movie. I talked to my dad about how humanoids could really be possible and how they could really help humanity. They thought I was just joking because of the after effect of the movie. But my mom, however, was very proud that her favorite actor's movie had such a great impact on me. I started going to many robot shows. I talked to many robot scientists, such as Dr. Ravi Balasubramanian. I attended his TEDx talk, and I realized that I have a lot more to learn about robotics. So I subscribed to the robot magazine. I talked to many robot manufacturers and robot scientists. I am going to many robot shows, and I even ordered the Arduino Uno kit to learn more about robots. I also wrote a book on robotics called Amazing Robots to share my love of robotics with you all. My family now realizes that I'm not joking about this anymore. Did you know that many of the NASA scientists and robot scientists of today were huge fans of the Star Wars movie series and the Star Trek TV series? I am confident that someday soon, when I build that humanoid, do you know what I will name it? Of course. I will name it Chicky as a dedication to the awesome Mooga Indian theme. They set my heart on fire. Now here is my third observation. Nothing worth having comes easy, and nothing worth building is completed quickly. In his book Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell states that greatness requires enormous time. He interviews many people, such as Bill Gates and the Beatles, and asks them about the opportunities they had when they were kids like you and me. The common team throughout the book is a 10,000 hour rule. Now here's my third question to you. Are you doing at least one activity that you are passionate about? What is it? It's great if you have one. If not, find one and pursue it. Takeaway number three. Achieving greatness requires passion, time, and effort. Come on, repeat with me. Achieving greatness requires passion, time, and effort. You and I are Generation Z. We live in an information and creative era. Everything is available to us in a jiffy. Now, more than ever, our generation is poised for success. We are expected to hold on and learn from the past. We are expected to carry forward our culture and tradition. We are expected to stop war hunger. We are expected to cure cancer. We are expected to stop waging wars. And we are expected to save this beautiful planet that you and I call home. And we are expected to carry the torch forward as we race to uplift humanity with joint hands. We can do it. I am sure we can. Remember, success happens when preparation meets opportunity, develop and engage both sides of your brain, and achieving greatness requires passion, time, and effort. Thank you to Sam Uncle and the amazing Sam Kid team for giving me this wonderful opportunity to speak to you all. And thank you all for being such a great audience. And until we meet again, good luck and goodbye.